The member for Gippsland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Following the Prime Minister's admission yesterday that Australians are worse off since the election, why has the Prime Minister done nothing to help pensioners meet the rising costs of groceries, rents and petrol? Prime Minister. Um, I thank the honourable member for his first question in the parliament and I extend him the, the respect of having stood in the chamber for the first time to ask a question. On the uh, question of, uh, of pensioners, um, uh, if the honourable member had listened to um, the remarks I just made at the National Press Club, I went through the fact that uh, we have provided through the budget $7.5 billion worth of additional allocations to pensioners, carers and to those on uh, the disability support pension. And the way in which that uh, has been delivered in part is uh, through the uh, utilities allowance, which in the past was paid by the previous government, which ran, I think, at something in excess of um, $100 a quarter, uh, $100 a year, to be increased by a factor of almost four to $500 a year, and that we have now made that for the first time a consistent annual payment. That represents a large slice of the amount that which pay we paid. Furthermore, there was, of course, the one-off um, uh, pensioner bonus that has been the subject of uh, considerable discussion in this place, a bonus which was on a one-off basis introduced by the previous government for the two previous budgets, as I understand it, but not prior to that, and never announced as a permanent measure. The other thing we have done to assist uh, pensioners is to increase uh, the uh, telephone allowance uh, by some 50 per cent, and particularly to assist uh, pensioners with the start-up costs associated with getting internet connection at home, because often what we find in representations we've received around the country is that uh, pensioners, often separated by their kids in this vast country of ours, are looking for a bit of help in getting the internet connection at home because a lot of the, um, uh, the correspondence and the keeping in touch is conducted that way these days. So that's another practical measure that we have put forward. Also, we made um, a separate allocation of funds from recollection, some $50 million, uh, to various uh, seniors groups around the country to assist those seniors associations with providing in-house um, training opportunities for pensioners to assist them with the use of the internet at home. Now, these are practical measures which we've sought to help with, uh, but uh, as I have said at this dispatch box on many occasions, we on uh, this side of the House uh, are fully seized to the fact that pensioners need to have their long-term payments put onto a more secure footing. And that is why we have commissioned, uh, through the Henry Commission of Inquiry, a detailed examination of the future of the tax income support uh, and retirement incomes policy. And that is due to report in the case of uh, retirement incomes policy or the pensions component of it by February of next year. And again, I'll draw the honourable gentleman's attention to the fact that in the previous 12 years uh, that uh, his own political party in coalition with the Liberal Party were in office, I do not recall any fundamental, far-reaching reform or examination of the nation's pension scheme. I just don't. And I would suggest that those opposite who now stand and seek to um, preach from a high point on this question should take a long, cold, hard look at their record on this question. To assume, as the honourable gentleman does in his question, that cost of living pressures have just emerged in the matter of the last six to eight months for pensioners is simply not true. They have certainly spiked in recent times because of the factors that we've referred to in the debate in this chamber on petrol and on groceries. But the increase, because the increase uh, cost impact on the ability of pensioners, single age pensioners and married couples who are pensioners, to, uh, to survive on the basis of the age pension has been under a challenge for a long, long time. And anyone honestly contributing to this debate, and any member here in this parliament who's been in contact with their local seniors groups, would know that from years gone by. So there is an inherent dishonesty in the proposition being put by those opposite, which is this has mysteriously emerged in the last few months. It hasn't. It's been an emerging problem for a long, long time. But what's the difference? Is that we've commissioned a mechanism to examine this from the ground up and it will report by February next year, which will be within 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, 12 months of us taking office. My question to those opposite is what did they do in 12 years? What did they do in 12 years? I don't remember them doing anything in 12 years. And I would say, please, get your own house in order on this question before seeking to advance a debate like this and put forward a concrete policy on the future of the pension. I seem to remember a concrete policy being put forward by the opposition on the pension, I think by the relevant shadow minister. Uh, it was on a radio interview, I think, um, some months ago. 
from memory it lasted about 42 minutes. 42 minutes? Uh, maybe it was 43 minutes uh, before being slapped down by the member for Wentworth. Well, those opposite, if they wish to credibly engage in the debate on pensions, which is a very important debate for those uh, most vulnerable Australians, then I'd suggest they get real and put some policy on the table rather than engaging in simply opportunistic <laughs> politics. Yeah.